Hello, everyone. This is the most magnificent bird, Buckbeak, speaking to you today. And in today's video, I'm back at it with another character review. And this character review will be on Gold Mythic Morgan Unhinged, the latest tune of the Lone Wolves Allegiance. And before we get started, I hope all of you are doing good and staying safe out there. I'm doing good, and I'm staying safe for the most part. Now, for those, if you watched my first part of my Batman Arkham City playthrough, I did mention that my next video was going to be me going back to Arkham Asylum to start me on the path of finding all the Riddler clues, trophies, pretty much all the collectibles, and that was the plan, but when I recorded that, I had no idea this character was coming into the game about the exact same time, so that video is still coming. It's obviously going to be delayed, and, um, you know, I didn't want to delay this character review any longer, so I figured, you know what, I think I'm a day late or so. I'm not that late on the character review. Finding all the Riddler stuff, you know, that can wait. That's definitely on the agenda, but I figured, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and get into this, and yeah. Let's not waste any more time, and let's go ahead and jump into this character review, shall we? Morgan Unhinged, Lone Wolves. His trait is strong, his role is a tank, and his allegiance is a member of the Lone Wolves. Now let's take a look at his stats. His attack stat is 10,332 his defense is 21,237 and his HP is 25,829 now let's take a look at his adrenaline rush battle trend I don't know battle trend okay recharge rate is 55 AP so that's that's pretty fast. Revive three teammates with 30% of their max HP. Heal this fighter by 50% of their max HP for two turns. Confuse three random enemies for one turn. Okay, so I think this Adrenaline Rush is both good and bad. Um, the only realistically bad thing about it is, is the last part. Confusing three enemies, that's good, but the only bad thing about it is that Confuse only lasts for one turn, which is, I don't know, I think that's kind of a weird add-on to have Confuse. I think if they would have just left the revive and heal only without that last part, I think it would just automatically be a better adrenaline rush, in my opinion. But honestly, the confuse three random enemies for one turn, I think that's the only negative, really. I mean, you know, you have him reviving three teammates if they're not decapped or crosshairs that's the thing so as long as they're not decapped that's three teammates you're gonna be able to pick up and that's gonna be really nice plus he's gonna heal himself by 50 percent of his max HP for two turns so overall the only negative I see is the confuse three enemies for a turn that could have honestly been left off and I still think that would have would have been a really good adrenaline rush it's still good don't get me wrong it's still a good adrenaline rush but there's something in his kit that we will definitely 
we'll definitely talk about when we get there, but... Yeah, reviving three teammates, and then him healing 50% of his max HP. If that was the only things without the Confuse, that would still be a very good Adrenaline Rush, arguably. It might be even better than it is, but it's still a very good Adrenaline Rush, without a doubt. Now, let's take a look at his signature move, Battle Cry. The initial cooldown is turn one. One turn for the cooldown, number of uses unlimited. This fighter heals for 40% max HP for three turns and gets 20 AP. Taunt a random enemy for two turns. Okay, so this is pretty good. He's going to be healing for 40% max HP. AP, I mean, max HP, <clears throat> my bad, at the beginning of a battle, that's not necessarily, you know, he might not necessarily need that heal, so it's kind of a good thing and a bad thing, but the only negative is he obviously wouldn't get that heal at the very start of the battle, so it might be worth not using on the very first turn. But he will be getting 20 AP, which is a good thing. And then, see, this last part I like better with the signature move than I do with the Adrenaline Rush. He is taunting a random enemy for two turns. I like that better because depending on who you target and depending on who that enemy is that gets taunted... You know, that's controlled, unlike the Confuse, which you are confusing three enemies, but it's only for one turn. I don't know, me, I guess I would rather pick my target who I want to, who I know is going to be taunted for more than one turn. So, I personally like that last part of his signature move better than the last part of his Adrenaline Rush, but both his Adrenaline Rush and Signature Move are still pretty good in my opinion. So, yeah, you don't necessarily have to use his Adrenaline Rush, I mean, not his Adrenaline Rush, but his Signature Move. You don't have to necessarily use his Signature Move the very first turn, but you absolutely could if you want to. Even though he would be missing out on the heal the very first turn, he will still get the AP and he still will be taunting an enemy for two turns, which that's going to be really, really nice. And that's maybe potentially, in certain situations, maybe a little bit better than his Adrenaline Rush, but both of them are really good, in my opinion. Not bad whatsoever so far. So let's take a look at his mythic abilities. Strength. 40% critical hit resistance. I would absolutely go ahead and level that one up if you can for sure. No need to really go into it that much. Absolutely go ahead and level that one up. That way you can get the most out of him that way. Get up. When triggering this fighter specialist skill, one other teammate revives with 40% of their max HP. That's going to be a really good one because that's Halo, you know, spoiler alert. Halo 2 is his specialist skill. And we'll, we will definitely get into it, but that one I think is 100% going to be worth leveling up. You know, because whenever you trigger his specialist skill, like it says, one other teammate revives with 40% of their max HP. You know, that is if they have been defeated, so... But definitely, that will come in handy. You might not, you know... You might not need it immediately, but it would be worth going ahead and leveling up. Because, oh yeah, that will definitely make a difference in the battle, depending on who that teammate is that ends up getting 40% of their max HP. 
So Get Up is definitely one you can definitely get the most use out of with Morgan. Foul Stench. When this fighter revives, a random enemy gets 150% infection for two turns. Now, since his specialist skill is Halo... No, excuse me. Since his specialist skill is Halo 2, <clears throat> you know, whenever this fighter gets defeated, you know, unless he's decapped, which, you know, I don't know... Since it's Halo 2, I don't know if he can be, you know, I'm not sure. We'll definitely get into it, but if, you know, this character falls and he gets back up, thanks to Halo 2, he's going to be spreading infection around, which, you know, to one random enemy, but still, that's still a lot of infection and that's going to be a good thing for your defense team if you have Morgan on your defense team, which <clears throat> that's obviously going to, um, that infections for two turns. So, yeah, that's going to be a really good thing. And it's hard to heal that much infection for real. So, the battle will essentially, at least for that one enemy, will be over in two turns. So, it would definitely be worth leveling up Foul Stench. Valuable target at the start of each wave and turn, 50% chance to taunt a random enemy for one turn. Okay, so at first I was thinking this is a negative, but going back to his signature move, yeah, his signature move, <clears throat> excuse me. Going back to his signature move, where Morgan can taunt an enemy for two turns. Now, at the start of each wave and turn, he has a 50% chance to taunt a random enemy for only one turn. But, that's going to happen for every single turn. Even, like, on the first turn... If, for whatever reason, that other 50% hits and he doesn't taunt an enemy on the very first turn, well, the very next turn, there's a good chance an enemy could be taunted, which I think I would go ahead and level that one up because it's going to work really well together with his signature move. Pretty much every turn, you could have a whole team taunted, potentially, which is... <laughs> Which is absolutely insane. And yeah, I already like that better than to confuse three enemies. I actually do like the taunting a lot better because potentially you could have a whole team taunted. It's not 100% guaranteed, but 50% is better than 0%. So if you want to take advantage of that taunt for two turns with his signature move, Valuable target would absolutely work. I think that would be that would be so good for you. And that would be so frustrating to come up against. I haven't seen any Morgan Unhinged out there in raids and stuff yet. But, oh yeah, I'm sure I'll definitely see them. I could see people pulling for him, for sure. I think all of his mythic abilities are pretty good. Now, let's take a look at that specialist skill, Halo 2. The first time this specialist dies in combat, they revive at 100% max HP at the start of their next turn. Second time, they revive at 75% max HP. Third time, they revive at 50% max HP. Fourth time they revive at 25% max HP. This fighter cannot be decapitated. Heal reduction is removed when entering the halo state. Oof. There you go. I don't think that's on the regular halo, is it? Not 
you know, I'm pretty sure Halo Tunes, not Halo 2, but the regular Halo Tunes, I'm pretty sure they can be T. Yeah, they can be decapped, I'm pretty sure. But Halo 2, Morgan and Un. Like it says, Morgan Unhinged can't be decapped. So that's. <laughs> That's really, that's really interesting. And then the first time he will get defeated, he will come back with full HP. Then the second time, 75%. The third time, 50%. And the fourth time, 25%. So, at least, can he come back potentially for a fifth time? I don't know. It doesn't, I guess not. I guess it would take five times to kill him to permanently put him down that's the way I'm understanding it based off the description of the specialist skill after that fourth time it seems like that's it that he couldn't come back a fifth time which you know battles probably it probably won't even get to that point where it will get to four times more than likely it won't because he's got taunt, he could be taunting you, infection, confusing you, and, you know, it would just get to a point where even if that certain defensive team isn't killing you, you just might get frustrated and quit out of frustration, which I could see people doing that just to save on time and stuff. So, oh man, I can see why this guy is a primo a promo tune so yeah i can see why he's a promo tune for sure oh man halo 2 get ready for a lot of people to complain including me i i can definitely tell you that now <laughs> okay so very good specialist skill definitely very op for sure now let's take a look at his weapon morgan unhinged Guarding garden shovel 40% HP 40% defense improved attack down when hit when being attacked 60% chance the attacker gets minus 45% attack for three turns AP when hit when being attacked 50% chance this fighter gains 25% AP okay normally I would say his weapon is pretty bad and to a certain degree it's not the best weapon but I can see why they did that so the 40% HP and 40% defense that's very nice it's totally up to you whether or not you want to go more so on the HP or defense. Now, the improved attack down, I mean, I don't know, 60% chance the attacker gets minus 45% attack. I mean, that's not the worst thing that can happen to you when attacking Morgan. I mean, I don't know. And then AP when hit, when he's attacked there's a 50% chance he will get 25% AP. Now, for defense purposes, that fourth slot is actually really good. That means he will be building up his AP faster that way. That fourth slot, I do like. The third slot, I'm not too crazy about, but I understand why they made his weapon kind of underpowered. Because, I mean, hello... He's got Halo 2. Uh, he can taunt you like four and five different ways from dusk till dawn. I mean, he's got a lot going on. So I understand and I get why they made his weapon a little bit weaker. But if you really, if you don't like the attack down, what else could you put? Hmm. I'm sure you could swap that out for something else if you don't like that third slot, but if you don't mind the attack down, then you could go like 55% HP, 50% defense, or like 
45% HP, whatever, you know. If you want to go in all in on his HP, 55% HP or 55% defense, or you could do like 45 defense, 50% HP, you know. It all depends on what you want to do if you pull for this tune. I kind of get why they underpowered his weapon, you know, because the rest of his kit is pretty OP. And okay, I will. I'll just say this: this tune I think is really good, and I think he's bad too. Let me explain. Obviously. He's a very defensive tank. He's got the halo going on. He's got the infection he can spread around. He's got the taunting. He, you know, he's got the taunting going on. All of that. That all that stuff is good. But right now, the bad part about him is how does he fit into the lone wolves? As far as he's not a damage dealer. The you know the only damage dealers of the lone wolves are right now the only damage dealers of the lone wolves are Philip Blake Forsaken Michonne and they who wonder I mean they who wonder isn't doing as much damage as Michonne but you know he's doing some damage anyway and Morgan right now it just like it doesn't make any sense Unless one of the other two Lone Wolves characters that's coming out, you know, one of them two could be a defensive leader. I'm not really sure, but that's the only negative I have about Morgan Unhinged is as far as the Lone Wolves, he doesn't really, right now, this could change right now. He doesn't make sense because he's not a damage dealer. He's still very good, but as far as lone wolves, he doesn't make sense. But that doesn't mean that Eva and Ghost or the traitor, one of them two could be a defensive leader. Yeah, one of them two could be a defensive leader and then it would make sense, but I don't know. I guess we'll have to wait and see. I mean, who knows? For all we know, Eva and Ghost and also the Traitor, um, both of them might be damage dealers. I don't know. Maybe. Or maybe both of them could be defensive tunes. I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. But other than that negative about Morgan Unhinged, he is a really good character. And I, I gotta tell you... I gotta kick my I ought to kick myself where the sun don't shine. I'm telling you, I kinda wish I would have pulled for Wanderer. I don't know, that that's just me. But someone in my faction had pulled for him and they said that they were disappointed by him. And I, I could see why. But man, I kinda wish I would have pulled for him, but I wanna see what Eva and Ghost are about and then also the traitor. Like I said, one of them two could be a defensive leader. We'll have to see. But other than that negative, I do think he's a really good and really OP character. And I could see people pulling him, you know, pulling for him just in time for the next CRW to frustrate people and to have a really good new defensive tune. So that's pro that might be part of their strategy why they made him defensive because CRW is more than likely coming up this coming up weekend. So, but this Morgan right here, he definitely reminds me of season three Morgan from the TV show where he's like, I see nothing but red, red, red. And he's also, you know, saying that I see people wearing dead people's faces. You know, that that one episode where Rick, Michonne, and Carl go back to his old, uh, goes back to Rick's old hometown to look for weapons when, you know, when they, you know, to get ready for their inevitable battle with the governor. And they happen to run into Morgan, but Morgan has, you know, he's unhinged. He's crazy. He's 
lost his mind and he's essentially forgotten who Rick was you know at the moment you know he's like oh I see red nothing but red and you know just he's got the whole place booby trapped and all that good stuff so that's what this version of Morgan definitely reminds me of of that season 3 episode where they run into Morgan and then he doesn't show back up until like season five season six the very end of season five i believe but he's not as crazy as he was in season three particularly that one episode he even stabs rick i think in that episode because he doesn't you know he's so crazy he's unhinged and i do like his artwork and this artwork definitely reminds me of season three morgan from the tv show and yeah that's all i got for you guys for today what are your thoughts on gold mythic morgan unhinged are you gonna pull for him or do you want to pull for him and you just don't have the tokens and if you have already pulled for him how are you enjoying him so far is he definitely op like he definitely you know seems to be in his kit whatever your thoughts are on him let me know down in the comments i want to thank each and every one of you for stopping by and for your continued support or if you're new welcome in for the first time all of you are very awesome and i thank you again and don't forget to hit the bell and switch on all notifications so you know the second I upload to YouTube. I am Buck Beak, and I'm going to go fly away back to my nest. Until next time, bye guys.